G'day, welcome to Mark and Sam After Work. Today I want to do a review on this rifle in front of me. Now this is a 44 Magnum, it's the Rossi Puma 44 Magnum lever action. Um, it's actually a the Model 92 um, Winchester design. It, um, Rossi is a Brazilian um, rifle manufacturer and I know very little about them is the truth of it. I wanted to have a look at, I wanted to get one across to have a little play in in something similar to the cowboy style in the, of, of round, which is sort of the 44-40, but really the 44 Magnum. It's something I shoot in, in other forms. I use it in handgun in a Model 29. Um, we have target loads and then hunting loads. And to have something that was going to shoot that in a rifle, I thought it'd be a great option. So I did a bit of checking around. I haven't seen these before, so I thought I'd take the opportunity to get one across and have a look at it and let you guys have a look at it, uh, have a play type thing and do a basic review. Um, like I said, I knew not, I've seen very little of the Rossi side of things, but what I'm actually pleasantly surprised. It's actually very well built. When I first looked at the furniture on it, the wood on it, it almost looked like it was plastic uh, because it had because it was actually so neat and tidy and clean and with a tiny bit of an oil wipe on it the oil the woods come up nicely that it is proper wood it is um, nice fitting wood um, and actually the whole rifle um, is nice and firm and, and nice and tight actually exactly how you want a lever action to start it was actually quite firm and all it's moving it's getting better now with all the um with a bit of use exactly what you want to happen on that side of things um, everything actually about it the trigger there's no flop or free play anything in the trigger. I haven't actually measured it. It feels like it's around the three pounds, three, three and a half, maybe four pounds, but very nice for a lever action. Works really well. The sights, they're the classic buckhorn sight. Um, I'm not a huge fan of a buckhorn sight, to be truthful, uh, but they are what the lever actions come with um, and they work well. We had a nice little play with this. Um, it's got a metal butt peg on it. So probably with a lot of shooting and the heavy stuff, that would get a little bit harsh. Uh, yep. But once again, the classic Model 92. Um, <clears throat> extra little features, the knurling on the, and the round sort of feel on the trigger, uh, on the hammer, I should say, that, um, that was really nice to use. And everything about it was actually pleasantly surprising. The only thing I would say, which would be a general conversation, and this is, um, well, I suppose, I'm, what I'm about to talk about is the barrel. A twist in this barrel is better than in some, but is is actually one in thirty, which meant <coughs> when we were plinking up close, there were no issues whatsoever. When I tried to shoot it out further, I noticed the target rounds I was using, which are a two hundred grain target load, so they're they're running around the twelve hundred feet per second. Two hundred and I think they're two hundred thirty gram projectile in them. Um, nothing flash, but they were starting to get a fairly big pattern. Um, I did, wouldn't have any reason to think the barrel isn't dead straight. What I instantly thought of was, ah, it's just a stability thing. I went to a hunting round, and the first hunting round uh, ones I used were the Hornady, um, a 225 grain in the FTX. So that's a polymer tip, bit of a Spitzer shape bullet. It was a bit better, but still a little bit erratic. I still got a bigger pattern than I thought I should get. Now, I had been doing things differently. I wanted to have a little play. I was plinking out at a 600 yard target. So listen, it's something I do quite naturally. It's probably not what I'd be recommending, but I could really see my pattern was opening up. So I then went to some Winchester um, hunting rounds in just a, a 230, 240 grain, but hunting load, they stabilize nicely. And you'll see this group here that started to shoot pretty well. That was actually on target and starting to shoot what it was supposed to do. Um, that meant me, I came back and did some research. I was thinking probably we're in a one in 20 or a one in 24 or something like that twist. So too slow in, in a real sense. What I found was one in 30, which um, I, I listen, I suppose I'd have to say in lever, in lever guns and old guns, I'm not familiar enough to know. I did some research and found out something which I'm gonna share with you. This is one in 30. So what I can tell you instantly is it's way too slow for a lot of rounds. It works with some, um, but you would have to actually check through. And it's not something that Rossi have done particularly wrong by any means. They have a little better. From what I hear, from what I read, some of the Marlins are in one in 38, quite a common twist, one in 38, which is mind-numbingly too slow. 
Why is it you'd ask? Um, listen, I've done the reading I've done at the moment and no doubt there's some Libra Action experts out there that are about to tell me in the comments below. But what I've pieced together is that this was in the throes of changing over from and getting faster rounds. We're in the throes of changing over from smokeless powder from sorry from black powder to smokeless powder um, and then starting to struggle with lead fouling on straight lead projectiles going down the bore so with normal sort of rifle twists um, not so much um, dealing with spits of bullets and that sort of stuff so or longer bullets to to a large degree they were dealing with probably bullets that are inherently a little bit more stable in the classic sort of bullet but struggling with lead fouling. So one of the things that companies went to a long time ago was um, and around that time, and this is something I think the 22 Magnum fell into as well, is they into, in, went into what's called micro groove, so micro groove rifling, which has very fine, but lots of rifling grooves in the barrel. Now to do that I, with straight, something like straight lead, you'd need, you can't run a lot of twist it is just going to push over the top of it and just slide the, the bullet straight down without getting traction on the rifling. So you'd slow your twist right down. And in those cases, you'd end up with a good result with the right length projectile with soft lead and the micro groove. You wouldn't get your fouling, um, but you'd be running very low twist. So that's my suspicion of where something like 1 and 38 come from. And I suppose it's like another thing, I mentioned the 22 Magnum, we haven't finished that project, but we started to get to the same place. So running a twist that was too slow for the projectiles it should be able to run and th the manufacturers just haven't changed, they haven't moved on. So I would say the same place, Rossi is better than some. So I'd say it looked good and certainly as for how it shot with the right rounds was beautiful, awesome, shot very well. But I would say for all the rifle manufacturers, from what I'm seeing in my comment right now, which maybe I'll eat my words in some form or other, but from what I can see right now, change your rifle twist. Start to go into. I would, I would be, and maybe I'll even do that, I would be 1 in 15, 1 in 16, maybe even 1 in 14. I'll do some more maths on it. But I'm going to see no good negatives from all the projectiles we run now. Largely, when you run straight lead, we're powder coating them, doing something that is helping with the fouling side of things anyway, so it's answering the problem in a different way. But of course, for all the hunting rounds and spits rounds and things like that Hornady FDX, which is um, gives you a very good bullet speed, lower load, all that sort of stuff with the fact it's a little bit spitzer shape, so it travels through the air nicely, it does a good job in the hunting rounds, and that sort of stuff. Then you really could be, you know, back down, like I said, in the 114. But certainly that's where I would go, about half the twist is what this has got, and then that would have done a better job for some of those rounds. Um, but in saying that, still shot really well. So listen, that's just a, a general comment, not, my, not about this rifle. For what it is, I was, like I said, I'm really impressed actually. A great, great little rifle, really liked it. Um, it is the, the 92, so eject out the top. I would probably go to eject out to the side being more what I prefer to shoot with, but cause no issues. The everything about it, tight and neat and tidy, very well finished. So um, for me, it's a thumbs up. I think they're a great little option and something if you're looking for a lever gun, which I think everyone should have one, um, then they are an option to consider for sure. Um, I really liked it. Anyway, that's my um, video for today on this um, Rossi, Rossi Puma. Um, the 44 Magnum, obviously they, they do the other rounds, they do the 4570 I think in these, but certainly the, the 357 Magnum, all that sort of stuff. But for this one, it's the 44 Magnum and yeah, I like it. Anyway guys, thanks for checking in. Hope you enjoyed. We'll catch you next time.